But I think people need to understand what's going to happen because clearly none of these are being implemented. And even, even if people don't agree with your solutions, they've got their own. Nothing but everything for Wall Street into the black hole, everything clearly Pentagon, Northcom standing by to deliver us directly into the maw. And we've got Zolik, uh, Warren Stimulus, Sugar High, Won't Stim Unemployment. So what's this doublespeak? Top neocon World Bank President Robert Zolik, literally an Israeli agent publicly, warns policymakers that fiscal stimulus plans are insufficient to turn around the real economy and rising joblessness threatens to set off political unrest across the globe. And then he goes on, so 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 why are they making statements about political unrest knowing it's going to happen when they've engineered the policies knowing it would do that? Well, there have there has been a lot of political unrest. There's been a, a big uh, ferment in the trade union movement in in Europe. There've been there have been various kinds of riots and things like this around the world. And that's why I'm saying the program is absolutely critical. In other words, you can get a mass movement going under these circumstances, but if the Democratic Party collapses, you've got to have a, a, an actual program to get out of the Depression. I would say that's the golden question of right now. In other words, the most precious wisdom in the world is, how do you actually get out of a Depression? And I believe I know, and that's what I put into this book, Surviving the Cataclysm, which people can get from, uh, from Progressive Press and then I hope soon from, uh, from you. Uh, yeah, folks, just Google surviving the cataclysm, Wesper Griffin, Tarly. Resistance, okay? A couple of other things going around. Uh, the French government, of all people, the French government has now proposed the Tobin tax, the securities transfer tax. In other words, something like a 1% sales tax on Wall Street bankers as they do their trillions of dollars. I only support that if it's implemented by the nations, not by the very bankers themselves. Well, it's, it's implemented against the bankers themselves. They're the ones who pay it. No, but you and understand the U.N. Will, yeah. and the bankers have been proposing a Tobin, but on our money transfers to bring in a global no, no, no. model. On derivatives, on, on, on the rest of their speculation. Another example, the, the banks, now are, they have now bid the price of oil up to sixty-seven, sixty-eight dollars Now, remember who this is. This is Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, and they operate through the London ICE exchange. You can see it. They did it last year. They got it up to $150, $160. They're trying to do it again. So that's their thanks. You bailed them out with the TARP. Your tax money went to Goldman Sachs and, and Morgan Stanley, which are now banks. But, of course, as zombie banks, the only thing they do is derivatives and proprietary. And now trading. they're going to jack up energy so they all make tens of billions. They've got uh, to drive the price of, of gasoline and, and oil up to make some of these crazy windmills look more, more plausible. So that's what they're doing. Uh, by the middle of last summer, you were paying $1 for every gallon of gas. $1 went to Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley alone. So if you don't like that, what you've got to do is take measures to stop speculation. 100% margin requirements, position limits, and special status for speculators, which is inferior to the status of users and, and hedgers. Now... The other aspect of it is a political resistance. And I, I don't know if you've talked about Sri Lanka, but this seems to me to be very, very, very interesting. The U.S. and the British, over decades, fomented this Tamil Tiger revolt. These are terrorist butchers of the worst kind, right? Suicide bombers, female suicide bombers. They, they uh, pioneered all this stuff. The question now is the Indian Ocean as the Chinese lifeline, right? The Chinese need to get oil from the Persian Gulf, oil from Sudan, raw materials from Africa. So the Indian Ocean, the arc of crisis, in Brzezinski's terms, is now, now a key place. In the middle of this, you had this, this terrorist army sponsored by the U.S. and the British, the Liberation Tigers, and they have now been annihilated. Their, their chief, this guy Prabhakaran, has been uh, liquidated. And what you saw, a, a very interesting epiphany, right, the moment where you really see what's what in the world. As the Sri Lankan army closes in on these awful, awful terrorists, the uh, British Foreign Secretary, David Miliband, and the French uh, Foreign Minister, Bernard Kushner, come forward and say, oh, no, this is terrible. It's a humanitarian catastrophe. We've got now to, we've got to have a ceasefire. A ceasefire means that the Tamil Tigers escape and live to come back and kill and have more suicide bombers another day. But it's, well, that's it's, just like using al-Qaeda to attack the Serbs. And then they exactly. on but this they, airplane in Iran, they find the bomb. Iran's on record saying the U.S. is using... Uh, al-Qaeda to attack them. The White House admits under Bush and Obama they're using Sunnis to destabilize Iran, and then the news has the nerve to say that Shiite Iran is al-Qaeda. I mean, how <laughs> dumb. Don't people know that al-Qaeda is the U.S.-British government? 
Uh, well, the, the KLA of Kosovo that Biden has just been visiting and the, the Tamil Tigers and the... But I mean, and that's how ridiculous it is. On yeah, record, sure. the White House puts out press releases saying we got four Sunni groups attacking Iran. They're blowing up mosques, trying to blow up airplanes, bombing things. And then they got the nerve to say on the news, look, Al-Qaeda is hitting Iran. We've got to stop Al-Qaeda. I mean, how dumb do these people think the population well, is? It's, it's specifically, Jundullah, right? The Balochistan... Uh, U.S.-backed liberation. Yeah. But now, what what the Sri Lankans have done is going to be imitated, and I think the Pakistanis have gotten the idea. Now, the, the reason that, that Obama wants I'm going to stop you again. Pakistan president goes on and says, we're with al-Qaeda. You created al-Qaeda. You're right. using the Taliban to isolate our cities. You're overthrowing us with your al-Qaeda. And boy, they didn't like that, did they? And the, but the answer is now, what the, what the Pakistani army seems to have done is to say, what the Sri Lankans have done, we can do, and that is to say, take the conventional Pakistani army, go into this Swat Valley, and basically wipe out the Taliban, uh, which uh, are largely people now who have been recruited by the Indians and by the CIA in Afghanistan and then sent into Pakistan to overthrow the government. Those people seem to have been pretty much mowed down. So about 1,500 1, so-called Taliban, in other words, CIA secret army types, have been uh, wiped out in, in this Swat Valley, Minimal losses for the Pakistani army. The, the goal being that if you can kick the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda out of your country, then Obama will no longer have the pretext to send these killer drones to destroy civilian uh, targets. Which they, they always they target do. weddings and innocent groups Absolutely. to stir up and to get the Pashtuns and others to join with Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Webster, it's so dastardly. On record, Al-Qaeda Taliban is CIA, Mossad, Shin Bet, MI6, on record. Right. And you try to tell the public that, they just can't get it. How? I mean, this is on record. But now, it, the, the difference now, though, is something new. That under Chinese auspices, and this is this is simply what's going on, like it or not, they've they figured some of this stuff out. It's called the string of pearls, right? The Chinese say, well, we need to have Thailand, Burma, Myanmar, we need Bangladesh, we need Sri Lanka, we need the Seychelles, the Comores, we need to get over to Sudan and Zimbabwe. These are your Chinese allies, and this is what Brzezinski and Obama and uh, the Clinton State Department are are attacking. So there's got then to be a resistance, and the Chinese are basically showing them how to do it. With Chinese help, the Sri Lankans have wiped out these Tamil Tigers, and it may well be that with Chinese help, the Pakistanis are going to liberate themselves of the presence of these Taliban and Al-Qaeda. All right, i, I got to shift gears. It's a very calls. promising sign in the world. I think highly interesting people should know about it. Well, we've got to have you up longer in the near future to really let you run all this, because you're such an expert on it all, uh, and we really appreciate your time. But uh, going back here, but at the same time, China is Siamese twins here with the United States and the West owning the majority of our debt. And are they going to continue to hold the dollar? How do you see things unfolding versus... There's, there's a big debate in China now because the, it is, of course, crazy for a developing country that needs to buy capital goods to hold large amounts of, of dollars, paper dollars in the form of these treasury bonds. Uh, the, the Chinese leadership, uh, they show they're really not as clever as they, as they thought they were. They seem to believe in money, money in terms of paper, money, dollars. Well, these are just green pieces of paper. If you get some dollars, what you damn well better do with them is go and buy some capital goods, go and buy steel mills, go and buy locomotives. Well, they're starting to do that, plans. though. They're, China's moving into copper, they're starting gold. to do it. And that so was the moment, the gales of laughter... For tiny Tim Geithner, the tax cheat, the turbo tax man, when he went to Beijing University and they basically guffawed him into, uh, into you know, non-existence, when he said, I want you to know, I want you to know in the worst way that your investments in U.S. Treasury bonds are safe and sound, and they just all started laughing. And I think that's, that's a turning point of world history because uh, it, it, it's just untenable. Because uh, the they know a slime bag corporate thief that's destroyed America, a little spider is in there, and it's all just a big joke to them. They're trying to prop up their biggest market, but I mean, I think the decision has been made globally that it's 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 the end, and I, and I guess we'll just be ruled by a bunch of Geithners and Summers and and uh, you know Rubin running around with with military in the time we've got Webster. Then how do you see this unraveling? And now, have you seen the TV ads that are running nationally with people in black and red uniforms marching 
and 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 they're openly announcing that they're going to be on the streets and are on the streets. I mean, I mean, this, I mean, it's actually happening, Webster. It's one thing to say we think it's coming, but I mean, we are descending into hell here. Yeah, it's it's obviously a a, a bad scene, and and there are these these uh, quasi fascist or fascist militias coming out. But I urge people don't take yourself out of the equation. This whole regime is extremely vulnerable right now. I agree. The big problem is. If you go forward and say, you know, we don't like Obama, but we want the free market, that's a loser. It's it's just, it's it's not going anywhere. Yeah, they're going to have us argue between left and right when this has nothing to do with it, and a phony right-wing thing versus a left-wing thing, and then meanwhile, it just goes off the edge of a cliff.